Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Super Jer Show. Uh, in this episode, we are going to review Green Day's Nimrod. I'm joined once again by Mirrors. Hello, Mirrors. Hello. And Manatees. Hello, Manatees. What's up, everyone? What's up? So, with this album, uh, and again, we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants, doing some new releases, some old albums. You know, I'm introducing Mirrors and Manatees to music that I grew up on uh, just because they introduced me to pop music over the last several years. Um, (laughs) But this album, uh, I would say let's share our familiarity before we get into our reviews. Um, I just want to say briefly at the top, I was a – well, I won't say anything. I won't say anything. Um, (laughs) So I guess, yeah, talk about your overall Green Day familiarity, familiarity with this album ahead of time and what your overall thoughts are. And Mirrors, we'll start with you. Okay, so um, all I know from Green Day is like their biggest hits. I have never sat down and listened to an album of theirs from start to finish. Um, Basically, whatever has been on the radio a lot, I've heard. Um, Some I'm more familiar with than others. Um, And it's funny, I was actually looking up like when the albums came out. I didn't realize that they have been around as long as they have. Mm -hmm. I thought that they were kind of like late 90s, early 2000s um, only. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, they released an album in 1990. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how old are they? Um, So, yeah, I had no idea. Um, So I've really been, um, I guess, behind on the times. Okay. Um, And you want to preserve the tracks that you're familiar with in case Manatees doesn't know them. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And one of of the tracks I knew that was on this one, um, that I was surprised to see that it was on here. Oh, that it was, that this was the album it was from. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. Like, yeah, I didn't look at any of the tracks ahead of time. So once I got to it, I was like, oh, I know this one. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, uh, and then you you said uh, talk about um, my thoughts on the album as well. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and review okay. it. Let's know uh, what you thought. Yeah, um, I so I I've gone through. Um, I've had two different feelings about this album. I've gone through where at first I'm like I don't really care for it. I kind of have a hard time understanding what he says most mm-hmm. of the time. Um. And I was like, oh, these songs are too short. Like, this is crazy. But <laughs> then I started listening to it more and more. And I'm like, this is a really easy album to listen to. Uh, it's really good. Really catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, and also at first I was thinking that, like, all the songs sound the same. But then the more that I listened to it, I was like, no, I'm recognizing this melody, this melody. That Like, I was realizing, mm-hmm. no, that, you know... They don't all sound that. Now they similar. Okay, some of them sound more similar than than the others on the album. Um, but uh, just the more that I got into it, I was recognizing and like able to tell the difference and liking it more and more. Like I've liked it more and more with every listen. Okay. Um, and yeah, and I like I said, you know, it's only I think forty nine minutes long. Um which really shocked me to see that an album by Green Day was that short. Um, I think especially compared to some of the albums we've been reviewing recently, that's been like 30 mm-hmm. songs. Oh, like which and... one? No, yeah. yeah, which one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it was, it was, it, it was uh, whiplash listening to this one after <laughs> those. And I think at first it kind of like, I was a little unsettled by it and like, oh, this is all you could do was 49 minutes. Like you couldn't give more. Um, But then I feel like some of these, like they didn't overstay their welcome. They didn't go on too long, like unnecessarily, like it got to the point. Um, And they were short enough to be like where I, I could easily remember them. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I found myself really, really enjoying it. And I, 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 I've been like listening to it in the background a lot when I was driving was the first time I listened to it. Um, so it's like, it's a really good like road trip album. Um, and yeah, it's just a really, really easy to listen to album. Uh, let me ask you, did you ever 
actually get into the lyrics and actually like follow along with the lyrics when you eventually listened or did you, did you eventually understand like what he was saying at some point? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. Just like the, the first time, like when I was in the car and then like I sat down again and listened to it and then I pulled up the lyrics on um, Apple music and I mean, I mean, the more that I listened to it, I, I was able to, you know, understand. I, I just think because I don't like, I don't sit and listen to them that much maybe i wasn't used to his voice and like the way that he sings mm -hmm. um and some of it was kind of fast <laughs> where yes. it was kind of like like some of her like are, are a little wordy um so it was just like a thing like at first like if i didn't listen to it as many times as i did i, I probably wouldn't like it as much um and that is probably just like a me thing just not like listening to them other than oh hey a green day songs on the radio kind of thing gotcha okay so overall pretty positive after you got used to the melodies and got used to the sound yeah mm -hmm. okay how about you manatees uh familiarity with the band first and then uh overall so i i'm uh similar to mirrors i've never actually listened to a whole album by green day um and this was definitely nimrod is once I got into it, I only had heard one song before. Wow. Um, but I do know all their big hits, I think, for the most part. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen on YouTube their, and I think maybe even at the time on MTV, I've seen their performance at Woodstock <laughs> in 1999. And I just always remember thinking they're really fun to watch live. Like mm -hmm. they have character. Um, and I do like the lead singer's voice. I actually really like his voice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really didn't know much about Nimrod. And like I said, only one song was familiar to me. Um, and my first thought when the first track started playing was, oh yeah, this sounds like Green Day. Um, <laughs> you know, like, oh, that's definitely Green Day. Yeah. Uh, so it was definitely a familiar sound. Um, but what really surprised me was I actually think it's pretty well written. I, I think there's some really interesting lyrics. I think they have a, a really unique way of putting certain things. And it's a variety of topics, but a lot of like jaded stuff and some really hateful stuff. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Um, but it was it was funny, too. Like it wasn't. Yeah. You know, it was a big difference between this album, which sounds familiar, but I like the lyrics versus like Love Sucks by Avril Lavigne, where it sounded very s similar to maybe some of her older stuff, but the lyrics were just not there, you know? I agree. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I, I really liked, um, I think my top seven, maybe my top nine, my top seven to nine. And then the rest of the songs, it's not that I didn't like them. It's just they were all in the same vein to me. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like pop punk, driving music. Honestly, still some really good fun lyrics, some really good melody, but just all in the same vein. But yeah. I, I definitely had fun with the album. And I, I was, you know, for me, the lyrics kind of really is what elevated it for me. Yeah. Uh, really wisdom beyond their years they were in their 20s when they wrote this and there's like some really, really yeah like because he were... refers to himself as an old man I know, yeah i know <laughs> like i just feel like that's what i'm saying there's like wisdom beyond their years where now here i here it is 25 years later more than 25 years later since the album came out and i still resonate with the youthful high energy sound from when i was growing up and some of the jokes the more serious, you know, uh, the jokes about being old and the serious song about like looking back at your life, like with the, with the good riddance song, it's like that stuff really hits as you mm -hmm. continue to grow older. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'll say for me briefly, like this is one of my most listened to albums in my entire life. This was like on repeat. What? Start to finish. I, when I, I got this when I was young because, I got introduced to them through Dookie, through When I Come Around and Basket Case. And then when I found out that that band had a new CD, I bought it sight unseen. I bought it before Good Riddance was a big hit. I bought it before uh, any anything that really blew up for them outside of the Dookie tracks. And 
uh, just listened to it over and over and over. Like Nice Guys Finish Last was like featured in the movie Varsity Blues. And when everybody started talking about, mm-hmm. oh, I really like that song. I'm like, bitch, I liked that song six months ago when I bought the <laughs> CD. <laughs> Um, I had no idea you were that familiar with the album. I thought you were just like, oh, yeah, like, I don't really know them that well. Let's listen to Nimrod. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I definitely picked Nimrod for a reason because uh, I used to listen to it, like, yeah, all the time. Like, and I've probably said this before about other albums, but um, I something that I used to do as, like, an introvert is I used to just – put on a CD in a CD player in the garage and I would like ride my bike in my driveway in circles and just like blast the music and listen to the music and like try to figure out the guitar and try to figure out the melodies. Mm. And uh, whenever I get tired, I'd stop and take a break and drink water and I'd read through the lyrics that like read along with the lyric book and like really listen. And there's a couple of other albums that I have, like, have that memory for me. And this is one of them where I'm just like, mm. I really, really, really liked this album. Um, so energetic. So fun. I think I've also said in the past, though, my, my genuine only criticism with Green Day is that they only play three chords. Like, they have three chords that they play in almost every song. But the brilliancy of Billy Joe Armstrong is the melodies that he's able to come up with and the lyrics that he's able to come up with around that simple fast pace music makes it worthwhile and severely elevates it. Like I couldn't agree with you more, especially looking at the lyrics now uh, in, in hindsight uh, or, you know, growing up of just really great storytelling, really funny, uh, you know, s- slightly heartwarming, uh, you know, really interesting. I'll also say, like, politically, Green Day has always been a very progressive band. They've always been a very inclusive band. So, yeah. uh, like, even when I was younger, growing up in the Midwest, and I had more conservative tendencies, they, like, really kind of pulled me out of that, like, especially with um, the album that they released in 2004, which was, like, a severely kind of political almost you know political album specifically calling out uh uh political administrations in their songs um and so i i kind of really appreciate them for that and being ahead of the uh the curve for that and um i'm kind of really thankful for that because i don't think i can say the same thing about some other pop punk bands that I like grew up on, like, I don't think other bands have maybe aged as well, <laughs> you know? Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So definitely love this album. There's like maybe one or two tracks that I don't, I'm not going to devote the time to just because I heard them when I was a kid and, and I don't need it. But, um, you know, I would say if this was like a 15 or 16 track album, I'd say it's almost perfect from, yeah, variety of topic, variety mm-hmm. of tone, uh, I- impressiveness and again like every song that starts is like oh this is this one with that that melody like 25 you know 25 years later and I don't remember the last time I listened to it like at all like maybe when I was a kid except for two or three songs here and there you know um, but even to this day when a song starts there's either a verse melody that sticks out a chorus melody that sticks out or literally both like oh wow like I really remember this you know, it really mm-hmm. sticks with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. So I, I definitely really like it. I feel that it really stands uh, the test of time. That's also something that's fun about going back and forth from contemporary new music to older music is you can look at it through a different lens and you can kind of be more confident about your opinion. At least for me, I can be more confident about my opinion because, oh, I heard this a long time ago. Let's see how it holds up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's like, you know, when I tell you, you know, the Slipknot album holds up 20 years later, like the Green Day album holds up 20 years later, can confirm, you know, and Mm -hmm. I do think uh, and I agree that there's a few tracks that, again, they, you know, they don't quite have that memorable jump start. But, yeah, I think the majority of the tracks have like a little, you know, humming, memorable, you know, like there's just a lot of good uh, a melody here. So. Yeah, let's get to uh, scores, and then we'll get to our track ranking. Mirrors. All right. So I decided to give it a 7.5. Okay. Um, and I probably – I would give it an 8. It, 
except if like the my bottom tracks weren't here um and yeah but yeah i know i, I really uh, i really liked it okay manatees i had fun with the album i gave it a seven but i'm with mirrors that every time i hear it it I actually appreciate more things about it. So I think this album could grow it on me with time. Yeah. I think that um, in all my wisdom of having heard it a hundred times and having heard it as a child and having heard it as an adult, I can safely say this is a 9.5 album and you guys will get there one day. Okay. <laughs> um, so much melody. You sweet, sweet children. So much lyrics, so much jam packed in a two and a half minute song. Um, the only thing that's really lacking is kind of the things that we've been loving about Slipknot and Metallica is like that world class musicianship where, you know, you don't care what they're singing or what they're saying. You just want to hear the music. That is like not what you listen to a pop punk band for. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so let's, uh, I, I'm glad that you didn't absolutely hate it. I'm really excited to find out where this, where these uh, rankings end up because I have yeah. some ideas about what songs you all are going to like. And uh, I mean, I'm pretty confident about, you know, the top of the list, but we'll get there when we get there. Um but yeah. it, it wasn't as automatic as I assumed it would be on for me on, on my re-listen. I was kind of surprised myself. So we have 18 tracks here. I figured we'd just do six groups of three. Does that sound good? Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Mirrors, let's start with you. You're 18 <laughs> through 16. Okay. So, the, so my 18 and 17, I flip back and forth a lot. This is my... Official, unofficial, because the 17 <laughs> would be 18, except there was an element of it that I liked so much mm -hmm. that I couldn't put it as 18. But my 18 is Jinx. Um, that one for me, I just, it just, it is not as memorable for me. It was harder to kind of like, oh, what's this one? Like, I remember what it's about, but it just, mm -hmm. I thought there were better tracks, personally. 17 uh, is Take Back. Or should I say Tyke back? Um, <laughs> actually, I, the only reason I don't like it is just the 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 way that he sang it. But I made a note, like, if this was Slipknot or Metallica, I would have really liked it. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the music. Mm -hmm. Like, it makes me sad that that is at the bottom like that. And that's why I couldn't put it as 18, but I couldn't. But it's just the – and it was just kind of, like, out of left field. I guess, and it was just kind of like, oh, what is this? But I mean, like I said, I actually really like the song. And I really, really like the music, um, so I couldn't put it as my bottom. But it, at first, was like, oh, this is the worst. Um, and then uh, number sixteen is "Walking Alone," um, and actually, I like like the harmonica on that. Um, but again, it was just to me, it wasn't it wasn't as memorable. I guess I kind of had to keep going back, like, oh, what's the song? What's the song again? Mm -hmm. that's fair okay manatees all right so my number 18 was reject my number 17 jinx and again those two similarly to what mirrors just said they're they're just so interchangeable for me um my number 16 was also walk alone hmm interesting okay uh where am i at so yeah, my number 18 is Last Right In. Uh, it's fun. What? It's jazzy. <laughs> but I just, yeah, every time I hear it, I just move on to the next. <laughs> um, mm. My number 17 is Take Back. And I agree with what Mira said. Like, I respect it for what it is. The anger, the rawness, uh, the grunginess of it. And he is specifically mixed lower than the guitars like you're supposed to it's supposed to be like he's so loud and angry you can't hear what he's saying like that's one that i i definitely used to like read along with the lyric book where because i'm like what the hell is he saying it just sounds like da 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 you know but yeah when you yeah when you see the lyrics and like just kind of see like the the just that the anger and the grunginess in it uh it's fun and it's unique it stands out when you hear that guitar you're like oh this is take back i know this song it's so good <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, and number 16, I have to go with Prosthetic Head, um, mm. which, again, I'm going to say, besides Last Right In and Take Back, I listen to every track. I don't skip the rest. So, like, this is a really deep album for me. Um, even Prosthetic Head, I really like that song. I really love the melody. Uh, it's got a really fun, memorable little guitar riff. Um, and... Yeah, the harmonization of it, of when he sings You Don't Know, you know. Uh I, I really like that. Yeah. Um see, I've always liked I've always you know, I always thought the album should end on good riddance because it's just such a like a a, a, a emphatic, you know, thump mm-hmm. of a song. Um yeah. and uh, and prosthetic head I always felt should have been before good riddance. I don't know why they made Prosthetic Head the album closer from mm. like a vision of the album perspective. It just seems so weird to me. Anyway. Okay. So Mirror's uh, 15. All right. So my number 15, which this is the, the end of my songs that I don't really care for, is uh, Reject. Um, just to me, again, just kind of like not as memorable. All I remember from that is you're not my type. Um, you're not my type. What's the difference between you and me? I do what I want. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then now here we are in in the like category. Okay. Uh, number fourteen. I have the Grouch. Actually, really uh, thought that, that was funny. The world owes me, so fuck you. Um, <laughs> I I mean, I kind of want that on a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, and. I, to me, like I, I thought of you when listening to this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like I, I was just like, this is like all the things you say about yourself, and like, you know, you are <laughs> I a grouch. Know. So, I know. <laughs> it's you. So this, I'm expecting this to be your number one. Um, <laughs> and then, um, then my number thirteen is all the time. Um, mm. But but I again like this is a I I like I like all of these. Um, it was hard. I switched these around so so many times just because it's just, it was just really hard. I, I think every week I'm like, oh, this was the hardest track ranking for me. This was the hardest one. <laughs> it really is. It's getting like like is the albums because I feel like we've been on a roll of like really good albums uh, lately. Well, we it's basically just, did greatest hard. hits for some of the best bands in the world. So, yeah. you know, it, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I'm picking, you know, classic albums, strong albums. I'm not trying to pick albums. I think you all are going to hate, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just been, it's been really hard, but, um, but I did like the, uh, cause I think it's like the wasting time, wasting time. Da, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Nice. All right, manatees, your fifteen. All right, my fifth. Yeah, my fifteen was prosthetic head. My fourteen was uptight um, because I just noted to myself that I really did like the chorus, but I thought the verses were okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my number thirteen is take back, and he just they just have a way better mean hateful song later on my list yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) much higher yeah Yeah. but yeah yeah i agree take uh take back you know it take back stood out i was like oh this is this one like when i even haven't heard it in years i just it has you know it has a persona (laughs) it Um, does interesting growl he can growl yeah Mm -hmm. I like, I'm so curious if they ever did that live. I don't know. It was never a single. It, I know, I'm pretty sure I know what the singles were. That was not a single. I kind of want um, an album of just all songs like that, to be honest. <laughs> right. Uh, my number 15 is Hashinka. Uh, super catchy, really fun storytelling. That's one that like I liked less as a kid and I liked more as an adult. I really liked how... I think when I was a kid, I just really liked all the fast stuff. And now that I'm an adult, I really liked the slow start and build up and bring in more of the music. Um, And then number 14 is Platypus, I Hate You. (laughs) I I mean, you're a liar and pathetic and alone in life. Uh, (laughs) Could never. You could never. Never. (laughs) This song is really about if you're mean. (laughs) And I kind of loved it for it. Um, and then, 
yeah, yeah, pl- yeah. Platypus is like such a fun, just again, angsty, angry punk song that in your lowest of lows, if you're having mean thoughts, you can blast this song and everything gets better, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And then number 13 is All the Time. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a generic title, but it's a really memorable song for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that wasting time, wasting time down a bumfuck road. Like, I just like, I just, I do love the lyrics overall on this album. And but and, and in that one, it starts to get a lot stronger. Yeah. It's so weird that it's like, oh yeah, all the time. And then it's like, you hear it. It's like, oh, I know, I know this whole song. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Uh, what, 12? Okay. Uh, so my number 12 is Worry Rock. Um, that first line, the another sentimental argument and bitter love. Like mm-hmm. I found myself just singing that a lot, and like every time I'm like, "What's which one's worry rock?" And then I hear that, and I'm like, "Oh, that one's that." Mm-hmm. Um, and I just yeah, I just really enjoyed that song. Um, my number eleven is um, "King for a Day." <laughs> um, that one, it it shocked me. Like once I was realizing what um he was singing about i was like oh okay Mm -hmm. and then it's but like how you said like they've always been progressive that that was what immediately came to my head was that one um and uh it was just catchy and it was ska and it was a nice little like different sound um it was fun in the way that you used to be fun before you had to be right wing to make joke like that you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like I don't think it's mean spirited in the slightest. I think it's about, I think it's a story about a confused boy and making light out of a strange situation and using song to tell the story. Like I, you know, like today, like, I don't know. I don't even know if they could write that song in such a neutral way. I feel like it's like an almost neutral song, but, and, and yeah, I agree with you, catchy, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then 10. Yep. Um, is prosthetic head. Um, yeah, I really like the the yeah, like that really stuck around. And then I like the line "red blooded a mannequin." Um, <laughs> I just thought it was really like clever and um, also like kind of a an fu song. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought that one was really catchy. And yeah, I do agree. It's like it's a weird way to end the album when you've got. Um, good riddance there um yeah. i think it would have it would have worked better um maybe like at the midpoint or something but uh, mm-hmm. yeah i like that one nice okay uh manatees all right my number 12 is scattered i really like the lyrics and this idea of like reminiscing and thinking about life um and someone else and all that being triggered by scattered pictures on your floor but i think i just um didn't love the way he was singing the song uh but yeah um again I think like now for me I'm in a category of like these are just interchangeable I think they're all they're all fine my Mm -hmm. next few so my um 11 is worry rock I really like the lyric promise me no dead end streets and I'll guarantee we'll have the road or like fucked without a kiss again that's Mm -hmm. good yeah I like that (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, and then my number 10 actually is nice guys finish last. Mm. And w- again, this song, I was, when I heard it, the pre-chorus really reminded me actually of basket case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but good, good, ca- good, good, <laughs> <laughs> good catchy song though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm so fucking happy I could cry. I just, I love that so much. The phrase, the singing, like, the kind of angry, passive aggressiveness behind it. <laughs> so funny. Um, my number, where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Okay. 12. <clears throat> my number 12 is The Jinx. Um, that one stands out to me more because... It was it was able to come back to me from memory. I agree. Like even now, it's hard for me to pick the Jinx out of a lineup compared to other tracks. But once I get into the storytelling of 
getting you know getting arrested and being a troublemaker and stuff like that and, and like the clear clear images that that the lyrics and the fun of that song gives me uh, it kind of climbs up a little bit um my number 11 is walking alone i really like the harmonica in that one it's got a different vibe th than some of the other tracks on the album i really like the lyrics about uh you know saying the wrong thing putting your foot in your mouth and then you know yeah just just i like the uh, storytelling and lyrics in that one as well and then my number 10 is worry rock yeah um it's it honestly worry rock really reminded me of like taylor swift where it's like you're just saying a sentence and changing the inflections where it sounds natural like you know like it, where do we go from here and what did you do with the directions? That doesn't sound like a song lyric. Uh -huh. But mm. that, when he sings it, where do we go from here and what did you do with the directions? Uh -huh. It's like it gets stuck in your head. I'm like, oh, my God, that's uh -huh. so catchy. And it's like this really long run on question sentence that is just a <laughs> lyric. Um, so, yeah, definitely like Rory Rock. Uh, even stronger today than when I was young. I think when I was younger, that one was lower. Uh, okay. Last three, right? We're at number nine? Yep. Okay. Okay. So my number nine is Scattered. Um, yeah, that one was like a really visual um, one for me. I Yeah, I like the, like l literally saying like pictures scattered on the floor. It, it reminded me of um, the Lindsay Lohan parent trap when the wind comes through and knocks all the pictures on the ground. I thought about that. Um, and I like the line, open the past and present now, and we are there. Um, my number eight is platypus. I hate you. Cause I Joe, cause I Joe. <laughs> that one. I just, I was like, damn, this is crazy. And then all like the crazy stuff that he says, like that one, I think it was in the bridge where he like says like all the really vulgar yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, yes. I was That's a like, great bridge. Damn. Mm. And it was just, yeah, so catchy. I'd be sitting at my desk, like, because I had to, because I had to, which can really come in handy at work sometimes, and you, and you, but you have to be uh, careful that you don't say it, you know, on the phone. Um, and then my number seven is Nice Guys Finish Last, which actually this was, like, even higher up um, initially. Um, it's just, it's super catchy. Um, I mean, yeah, just super super catchy okay which i mean basically this whole album is like really catchy it, it mm -hmm. surprised me okay uh manatees number nine all right my number nine is all the time <laughs> that just really gets stuck in my head mm -hmm. i really like the um lyrics like you know time flies when you're having fun time's up when you work like a dog salute <laughs> um yeah. I, I don't know i just really like that um, my number eight was the Grouch. I really like the Grouch. <laughs> I really, really like that song a lot. Um, okay, we're, we're so basically like all the time up. This is like these are just songs I really, really like. Yeah. Um, but the thing about the Grouch is like it's got that very like da 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 da, da which is like what I deeply associate with with Green Day. Yep. Um, yeah. And then. My number seven is Hitchin' a Ride. Mm. Wait, wait, am I am I in the right numbers? Yeah, I did it right, right? Seven, eight, nine. Nine, eight, okay, nine, nine, eight, eight, seven. Eight, seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my number seven is Hitchin' a Ride. I really like the string violin intro. I really like the bass and the groove of the song, mm. and the melody. I really like his singing melody. Um, I would say from seven through three, these could. These could like all shift around. Yeah. Um, I really, mm -hmm. really like these. Okay. Yeah, Hitching a Ride is that one's gonna go higher, I think. Not by much. Mm -hmm. We're we're in there's some really good songs up here. So like yeah. it's really hard to pick. <laughs> um we just nine eight seven. So my nine eight seven. My number nine is reject um i just the 
the verse sticks out with me. You're not my type. Dun, 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 not my type. Dun, 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 dun. What's the difference between you and me? I do what I want, and you do what you're told. <laughs> So, so what? Go to hell. Shut the hell up. <laughs> like, I, don't, I, just, I just like it. Um, my number eight is Uptight. Yeah, I think that's one of the strongest choruses on the album. It really builds up uh, mm. in, in a satisfying way. And uh, this is one, you know, where one of the criticisms of the album is that the guitar is not very exploratory. This one has a really catchy. Like the 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 music part can get stuck in your head just like the other melodies on the album can for me for uptight. Um, and then yeah, number seven, King for a Day. Uh, I this was one that I was like nervous to revisit because I remembered liking it when I was a kid, but I and I remembered the subject matter, but I didn't remember how it was tackled or what all the lyrics were. Um, and yeah, I just loved the playfulness of it, the innocence of it, somebody growing up and finding out about themselves and, uh, you know, again, be a lighthearted joke situation that could easily be hijacked and be much more negative and definitely like so super catchy melodic wise, like mm -hmm. verse, chorus, everything in between. That one like really st stood out to me like when I started listening to it again and the fun horns, <laughs> like yeah just super fun so i i took it i took the lyrics to be more autobiographical like about himself it's i mean maybe maybe mm -hmm. i yeah i i don't know and then like i i have seen pictures of him wearing like dresses and stuff androgynous so okay. yeah so i was just I, I i took it to be more like that was his like life experience it was I... kind of specific where he was like looking for a size four in mom's closet. Like, it's, yeah, it's almost dad... like, like, yeah, mm -hmm. like he, that's and his dad putting in therapy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I shall now look at the wiki and find out if Billy Joe Armstrong uh, was admitting to something that he did as a child. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, whether it's specific or whether it's storytelling, I still think it's written really well and it's really memorable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah. All right. Uh, mirrors number six. All right. So my number six is uptight. Um, I, I just, I, that's when I found myself singing a lot with the uptight all night. I'm a son of a gun. <laughs> um, I just thought that was, it was just super, super, super catchy. Um, and that's one that was also like a little bit higher. And yeah, what Manatee said, it's like, these are like really interchangeable right now. Mm -hmm. um, my number five um, is Good Riddance, Time of Your Life. This is the one that I knew. Um, and yeah, I know it was just like, it was a, a big song, I'm going to assume, because I knew it. Mm -hmm. um, from the radio and yeah i mean it's a it's a good song it was nice to have like you know a slower song on here like a kind of more emotional one and to get him like singing more you know where he's able to like sing a little bit slower and like you can really hear like the quality of his voice mm -hmm. um and then my number four which was my number one for a while wow. kitchen a ride Mm -hmm. um the riff was really good the whole music throughout adding in the strings um it kind of like i think it, it kind of like changed up and got like a little bit um uh i guess it was like in the the bridge or i guess there was like a guitar solo where it was just like the strings came in and it got like a little bit harder and the guitar um, yeah yes. yeah yeah because he fell um, off the wagon he's hitching a mm -hmm. ride yeah i like yeah yeah i'm off the wagon and, and i'm hitching a ride uh and then like the don't know where to go that was like in the in the background i think where it was like a, a back and forth at the end of the song yes um, yes 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 okay i just i really really like and this one actually sounded a little bit familiar to me when i first heard it so i don't know if this was like a single or anything or like where i might have heard it but it sounded like really familiar um but yeah i really 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 liked this one mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so we're six five four yes please mm -hmm. okay my number six is Hashinka. i don't really know how to say this yeah that's what i would um, say 
yeah, this track was a lot lower on my very first listen. And mm -hmm. every time I listened to it, it just kept going higher and kept going higher. And I think it could still keep going higher. It's such a mm -hmm. weird song. Um, but I really specifically love the drums and the song, like the music behind the song. Yeah. I like the lyrics too. Um, I like the verse melody a lot. Um, maybe the chorus melody is a little too repetitive, but mm. it's just a weird song that I really like. And it just yeah. keeps growing on me. That's cool. That's fair. Uh, yeah. And then my number four is five, 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 last. Five. Oh, sorry, sorry. My number five is Platypus. I hate you. <laughs> hey. um, I wanted to put it higher, but I didn't know if that would make me a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> no? But, um, yeah, I mean, gosh, just... I, I think this is just a really... Um, I don't know. I, I, it's one of my most favorite hate songs I've ever heard. So, yeah. for what that's mm -hmm. worth, you know? And then my number four was Last Ride In. Um, I yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I really enjoyed the uh, the fact that there were no lyrics and it was just a vibe. And I caught the vibe. I mean, it literally sounds like you're on a beach watching mm -hmm. like some surfers come in, and you know the the surfers coming in on like this cool mellow wave. And I just I transported to a beach, so I was just like, you know what, this is awesome. Fair enough. My number six is The Grouch. <laughs> uh, nice. I love, I loved, I've loved that song since the first moment I heard it. You know, now I'm just another shitty old man. I don't have fun and I hate everything in the world. I mean to fuck you. Um, <laughs> I can't believe they were in their 20s when they wrote that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were definitely young. This is only their second or third album. Um, yeah. Um, the, my the only thing that stands out to me for the grouch uh which i i do like the chorus it's an it's an a minor f cg chorus you know wasted youth in a fist full of <laughs> like i just hear jenny eight six seven five three oh nine because it's the exact mm. same music Right. Yeah, like you that hear is them similar. back and forth. They're like almost exactly the same. So that yeah. always bugged me about the chorus because I the verse is like fucking perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the upbeat. I you know the you know the negative complainy whiny lyrics with the super fast and fun and catchy pop punk chords. It works. I'm glad. I don't you know begrudge the selection of those chords. I just wish the melody was a little different in the chorus. Mm -hmm. uh, number five is Nice Guys Finish Last. Yeah, I've loved that um, that song like from the moment I heard it. It's the opening track. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> um, what's the lyric that stands out to me? I'm trying to remember it without looking it up. But uh, don't pat yourself on, pat the, yourself back. You on the back. You might break yeah. your spine. Yeah, I fucking like, love that. <laughs> I like all the lyrics in the song. But that one I remember just like, I just remember just looking at all these like, you know, smug, self-assured, arrogant people just patting themselves on the back. And I, in my head, I used to think, like, careful, you might break your spine, like, literally from this song, you know? That's uh, funny. Yeah. And then number four, Hitching a Ride. Like, it's awesome. It's even better, mm -hmm. like, now, now that I kind of understand a little bit more of, you know, falling off the wagon and, you know, kind of the storytelling behind it all. And, yeah, it has the strings. It has the build up and mm -hmm. just like the anger and this one was this one was definitely a single i actually think it has a music video um okay and uh yeah no hitching a ride is fantastic um it's actually musically very similar to brain stew which is what i think mm -hmm. a song that manatees had heard mm -hmm. before but brain stew is a lot is a little bit lower and a lot slower. It's dun dun ch, dun dun ch, dun dun mm -hmm. ch, dun 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 dun. Whereas hitch and a ride is dun 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 dun. But it's the same. It's the same progression. Um. But yeah, I love hitch and a ride. Okay, top three. I'm excited. Woo. 
Okay. So my number three uh, is redundant. Mm -hmm. um, this was one that, that was going up and up and up and up in my ranks because I kept um, thinking that I love you's not enough. I'm lost for words. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought that was really good, really catchy. Um, and I thought that was just like a really cool lyric. Um, my number two, this might, these might be shocking. My number two is Last Ride In. Um, I it shocked I, me. I'm inconsolable. <laughs> I was, I was, like I said, I was in the car whenever I heard the album for the first time. And I was, I was like, okay, when's the singing going to come in? And then I was like, oh, it's not, we're not, we're not going to do it. But I like the, the change when the orchestra came in and like the strings and it just kind of like was building on itself. I thought it was really beautiful. And yeah, I was imagining like surfing and like <laughs> California and just like, I just really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I was surprised that I put it this high when there's no lyrics, mm -hmm. uh, which is not like a slight to any of the other songs. Right. Um, I just thought musically it was really, really interesting. And um, and I was really surprised to hear Green Day having an instrumental song. Um, and then my number one is Hashinka. I Woo! really, it was, re it was, it's repetitive as hell, but I love it. The chorus that this girl has flown far away. Now she's gone. Like I've been singing that over and over and over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> um, and I just really, I really loved it. Like that's it's I'm gonna be song. listening to that for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I've I was shocking myself on my on my ranking this time. But uh, yep. Hashinka is awesome. That's a great yeah, song. Yeah, it's really strange. Mm -hmm. It's really unique. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, all right, my here. top three. So yeah. my number three was King for a Day, and I don't know what it is about this song, like this <laughs> this like lyric act, uh, the circus act, like background music with the horns, <laughs> I, and then it, like I don't know, the lyrical content was so interesting. I just. Honestly, I've never heard a song like this before. And kudos to Green Day, you know. Um, my number two is The Redundant. I, this song actually makes me sad. Mm. You know, I'm like, choreographed and lack of passion. And mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, damn. Prototypes of what like, we were, the routines turning to contemption. Yes. It's, it's stuck in the same old shtick again. <laughs> It's like it's adulthood and like that's most yeah. of your life mm -hmm. and you know that's kind of coming back to wow like they wrote these lyrics when they were in their early 20s that's mm -hmm. that's really says I, I don't know yeah they definitely have a lot of depth to them um more than I ever realized and mm -hmm. so I you know tracks like this tracks like king for a day Hashinka, I'm just like wow um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and my number one, you know, I had to go with Good Riddance. Like, it's just objectively, like, I, I do think this song blew up, and for very good reason. It's just just a really well-written song. Again, there's a lot of really well-written songs, but my top two for me, just kind of like when, when you're listening, really listening, it's just like, damn, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, really fun. Really, really fun. Okay. This was tough for me. My number three is also redundant. It's like, that's like an all timer song, like lyrically, melodically. It has a great music video. Redundant was a single and it has a music mm. video and it's a really good video. Okay. Um, hmm. Definitely worth watching. Um, yeah. I love it because again, like you see these song titles and you're like, there's nothing, there doesn't seem like there's anything special about that. And then you play the song and it's like, holy shit, this melody stands the test of decades. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's just so good. And yeah, such good storytelling and lyrics. The top two, I went really back and forth on for a long time. Uh, there almost was like a spoiler and a plot twist. But I ultimately <laughs> went number two, Scattered, and number one, Good Riddance. But I almost put Scattered over Good Riddance. Scattered is like... 
I just feel like if you're in the right mood, especially if it's like around a time a family member died, if you hear that song, it wrecks you. Mm. Like, mm. Um, because it's not just that the pictures are scattered. The person is scattered. Your life is scattered. I'm in shambles now. Nothing makes sense anymore. There's like a double meaning there. Mm. And um, yeah, and I just love, you know, I again, I feel like it, it's a big song about life and remembering people who uh, died and uh, thinking about the past and the present and the future, you know, literally spoken in the chorus. Uh, I've always liked the melody of the verse and the chorus. Um, the only thing that, that stands out to me that feels kind of weird because of how serious a song it is, is like the intro bridge guitar riff. Would it be all right? Have I got no place to go? Like I, I get it that it's actually probably leaning on somebody for help in a challenging time, but I don't know. I just always, it always feels like he wants to go to a girl's house. It's like a date song out of nowhere, but it's supposed to be like about life. I don't know. But yeah. Good riddance. I thought it was going to be lower because it was so overplayed. I heard it mm -hmm. so many times mm -hmm. in my life. I'm just like, that's a song that like, once it blew up, I would skip it when I would listen to the album. Like I got it. The acoustic song's good. Mm. I know that. I knew that. Um, but yeah, really paying attention to the lyrics, really appreciating, uh, you know, them kind of going down a different route musically. Um, I remember I saw a clip of them on MTV in the 90s. I don't remember if I saw it recently when I started to go down a Green Day rabbit hole or when I saw it, but like MTV was allowed like a preview of the next Green Day album. And they're literally in the studio mixing Nimrod and like they played like 20 seconds of Good Riddance for like MTV news and the guy, the person in it, uh, that was like there for MTV was like, this is a very serious departure from anything I've ever heard from you guys. Are you afraid mm -hmm. that you're going to like alienate fans or who expect that faster sound like all the time? And he goes, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong said, uh, no, I don't give a shit. This is the right, this is the right music for our band. <laughs> I was like, mm. okay. <laughs> and, uh, and he was right. <laughs> um, so yeah, good riddance stands the test of time and, uh, kind of lives up to the phenomenon that it became years ago. It's still a strong song today oh. and yeah, really, really memorable. And, and, uh, it really hit, uh, since it had been a while for me, I was like, man, this is why this was so big. Cause it's so good when you haven't heard it a hundred times. <laughs> Um, <laughs> or, or on the other hand, you can still hear it a hundred times and still like it. So, but yeah, so I have a question. I have a question. So I normally like to look up songwriting credits, <clears throat> which I didn't actually have, have a time, have the time to do for Nimrod, but I'm assuming he wrote that them. they write. Yes. Okay. So yep. Billy, is he the, the He's lead the singer primary is the writer. primary songwriter? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm hmm And then I think, I think they all give themselves songwriting credit because uh, mm -hmm. Mike writes the bass and Trey writes the drums, but I'm 99% sure that Billy Joe is the lyricist. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he yeah. writes the majority of the lyrics. He's a, an interesting guy. He's yeah. lived yeah. an interesting life. Yes. <laughs> and his dad died when he was really young. Um, there's another song that he wrote specifically about his dad on a later album that, uh, he has trouble playing live. So yeah, for sure. Hmm. Um, yeah, he's a deep guy, like, mm -hmm. clearly. I mean, I, I'm really, really shocked to hear that he, they were so young when Nimrod came out. I, I thought this was, like, maybe one of their later albums. Yeah, nope, nope. Nope. The show-offs. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's going to do it for this, uh, this review. I'm really glad that uh, a lot of the tracks landed with you, and it was really fun for me to revisit and remember some old memories and um, – kind of uh you know rem remember later life memories too um so yeah we'll uh we'll get out of here thank you again mirrors for joining me yeah thanks for uh having us do this album and making me officially a green day fan <laughs> thank you manatees as well had a lot of fun thank you thank you uh, if you want to email us and defend the terrible Jennifer Lopez album or <laughs> give us your ranking for the Green Day Nimrod album, the email address is superjurshow at gmail.com. 
thank you as always to anybody who watches or listens until next time